Netflix is one of the world's most popular streaming platforms, but it can also be used more than just an online movie theater. With a few tips and tricks, it can turn into a powerful language learning tool. And I'm going to share with you 22 genius tips that you can use to master the art of learning languages with Netflix. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm the Intrepid Guide, your guide to language learning for travel. And if you're new to my channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and click on the bell notification so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. Did you know that all the shows and movies on Netflix are available in multiple languages? Now this means that learning languages with Netflix can be a lot of fun and help you progress a lot faster in your target language. And in this video, we'll take a detailed look at how to make the most of Netflix, specifically for language learning, including different ways for searching for content, tips and tricks for better language learning with Netflix, third party apps that you can use to maximize your experience, plus top things to do and to avoid. So let's dive in. First things first is that you'll need to sign up before you can start using Netflix and you will need to enter your email, come up with a password and provide your billing information. Now the good news is that the first month of using Netflix is free for new subscribers and you can use this month to try language learning with Netflix and check out some of the tips and tricks suggested in this video. And if you decide it's not your cup of tea, just cancel the subscription before the month runs out. My tip is to set a notification that will remind you about your Netflix subscription in four weeks time, this way that you can cancel it before you build for the next month. Now Netflix is not very expensive to use. The basic plan is just $8.99 or £5.99p a month for the basic plan, which includes plenty of content for language learning. But if you want more, you can always upgrade later. Before we jump into the nitty gritty of how things work with the instructions, there is just one thing to note. All the instructions that you're about to hear and see in Netflix are based in your browser, either on a laptop or a PC. Now this is the easiest way as it allows you to navigate Netflix faster with the help of your mouse and keyboard instead of a clunky remote control. So you can search for content, click on links easier and add third party apps, which we will look at a bit later. Now, if you watch programs on a big screen, you can connect your laptop or desktop computer to your TV with something like Chromecast or an Amazon Fire Stick or some similar casting device. My top tip is to do all the searching for your language learning content on your laptop or smart device, then cast it to your TV. Using a remote control to painstakingly type in each letter is enough to drive anyone crazy, as you will see. There is also a Netflix mobile app, which is available for both Android and iOS devices. This way you can watch shows or movies on the go. The navigation differs slightly from the browser version, but all the similar principles apply. Netflix allows you to create separate profiles for different people in the household. For instance, you can create a children's profile where no mature adult content will show up, or just have different profiles for different people in the family or in the household that have different interests. With that said, it's also a good idea to make a separate profile for language learning with Netflix. This way it won't interfere with your regular Netflix profile or interfere with other users. To get some extra language learning, you can change the language of your profile too. It won't affect the language of the shows, but this way you'll get some extra language practice as you read the menu items and descriptions of the various shows and movies in your target language. To change the language of your profile, just click on the manage profiles bar and then click on the pencil icon that appears in the middle of the profile picture and you can see a list of available options to you here. So how do you find things to watch in your target language? Well, there are several different ways of searching for content on Netflix that will give you slightly different results. And if you try one and you don't like it, then you can use the other methods that I'm going to mention. Now, the first option is to go to netflix.com forward slash browser forward slash audio. There, you can search for shows with audio available in your target language. Now, for the purposes of this video, we'll choose Italian as our target language, but you can, of course, choose any of the languages available. What's great about this method is that you will see all the movies and shows available in this language, either original or translated and dubbed ones. Now, there is nothing wrong with watching movies or shows dubbed in your target language or that are originally in English or in any other language. However, there are more advantages to watching content that was created in your target language. 
For example, the language tends to be more authentic and you will often learn bits and pieces of the culture associated with this language along the way. Your choice may also depend on your language level. For instance, if your level is upper intermediate, such as B2 level or above, you can easily try out any shows or movies either original or dubbed. However, if your level is lower or you don't feel as confident in your language abilities just yet, you can try another trick. Choose a show or movie that you've already watched in your native language, no matter what language it's originally in. Just one that you enjoy and watch it again in your target language. Watching something familiar will be easier as you will most likely remember the plot and maybe some of the dialogue. This way you'll be able to concentrate more on learning the language instead of following the storyline. Another option is to use the search bar. Just click on the looking glass in the top right hand corner of your screen and type the name of your target language into the search bar. For instance, you can type in Italian language and there you will see a selection of Italian movies and shows pop up. At the top of the selection you will also see clickable suggestions like Italian movies and TV or Italian language films that you can explore to potentially find more content for language learning with Netflix. And here is one more way that you can search for content on Netflix. While looking through the content, hover your mouse or your cursor over one of the show's cards and click on the episodes and info arrow. You will see more information about this show. Now this is already useful because you can read the description and see how many seasons or episodes that show has, its rating, who stars in it and so on. Now in the genres section on the right hand side, you will see the language, which is Italian in our example. The genre section is also clickable and by clicking on it, you will be transported into the Netflix treasure trove of original Italian language content divided into different genres and categories. Now my pro tip is to add shows or movies to your list by clicking on the plus icon. And after you have watched them, make sure that you either click thumbs up or thumbs down depending on whether you enjoyed it or not. And this tells the Netflix algorithm what kind of content you enjoy watching and it will recommend more of the same. After you've added to your list and watched a few shows, there will hardly be any need for you to search for more content as you'll likely have great recommendations already appearing on your Netflix homepage. So should you use subtitles? Well, there are different opinions on using subtitles when language learning with Netflix. Some feel that using subtitles is somehow cheating, while others believe them to be a powerful language learning tool. I'm in that second category. So should you use them or not? And if you do, should they be in your native or target language? Well, that mostly depends on your language level in general and listening skills in particular. At an upper intermediate level or higher, your level is high enough to use subtitles in your target language. Subtitles in your native language may be a bit distracting and even slow down your progress. Now your preference in using subtitles, even at this level, may change from show to show simply because some people just speak too fast, the accent is tricky to understand, and sometimes you just want to watch Netflix and eat something crunchy. If your level is B1 or lower, and particularly if this is your first experience watching something in your target language, it's a good idea to start with subtitles in your native language. However, once you get more familiar with the language, it's better to switch to subtitles in your target language to maximize your learning. Subtitles are a great tool that can help your listening comprehension as well. However, try not to rely on them too much. And if you find yourself reading rather than listening to what people are saying, concentrate more on listening or even try switching off the subtitles at least for a short while. So let's take a look at some helpful third party extensions in your browser for Netflix. Now you don't always have to choose between subtitles in your native language or your target language when you can have both. It can be a great way to compare and contrast languages. So here are four browser extensions that you can use to help you to do that. The first one is Netflix Multisubs, which is a Chrome browser extension that allows you to watch Netflix with subtitles in two languages at the same time. However, you are limited by the subtitles that Netflix itself provides. Now, Language Learning with Netflix is another extension that does the same, but also has a pop-up dictionary that will allow you to look up new words on the go. The next one is Mate Translate, which is another pop-up dictionary that allows you to translate words as you watch the show. Now, this is available in Chrome, Opera, Firefox, and Edge. Next up, we have Lingvo TV. This is a combination of a Chrome browser extension and a mobile app that allows you to view subtitle translations on your phone. 
For more information on any of these tools, you can find a helpful list in the description below. As you watch Netflix, having a pen and paper and some kind of a dictionary at hand is a great tool. But remember, don't translate every new word that you hear or see on the screen, as it will slow down your progress significantly and lessen your enjoyment of the show or movie and make language learning less effective. Understanding words from the context is an important skill, and you won't develop that just by looking up every word in the dictionary. My top tip is to only look up words that you see often but can't understand what they mean, or the word is key to understanding what is happening in the scene or show. As for other words, you can write them down on a piece of paper or in a notes app and translate them and check their understanding afterwards. Now let's take a look at using a VPN. Now if you want to unlock even more content on Netflix for free, then you need to invest in a VPN. Now a VPN is a helpful program that not only protects your actual physical location, but it allows you to pretend that you are based in another country. But what does this mean for language learning and how can it help me learn languages with Netflix? Well, when you go online using any device, it has an indicator attached to it, and this is called an IP address. Among other things, this indicator tells the internet and sites that you visit which country you are in. This way, Netflix also knows where you are from. Now, the thing is, different content is available on Netflix in different countries, and this availability changes over time as new shows are being added and removed. So after you install a VPN like NordVPN, which is my personal favorite, you can use it to hide your IP address and use another one based in another country. And this way you can start to look for more shows in your target language that aren't available in your country. Now setting up a VPN is really easy, taking no more than three simple steps. And for more details about using NordVPN, just click on the link in the description below. So now that you know how to use Netflix for language learning, here are a few tips and tricks that will make learning even more effective. The first one is plan regular learning sessions in advance. This tip has a few language learning benefits to it. Firstly, we learn more effectively when we receive regular repetition as our brains begin to transfer information from the short-term memory into the long-term memory. Now, the reason for this is that if you don't repeat vocabulary and grammar units or practice various language skills very often, your progress will be very slow, if you have any at all. So to find out more about how to improve your memory, you can check out my memory hacks video, which I've linked to in the description below. Now, another reason why planning a regular learning session is so important is it allows you to prepare for and carve out time for learning in your busy schedule. Now, even though learning foreign languages with Netflix is fun, finding time for it can be a real challenge. But by looking at your schedule in advance, you'll be able to find suitable windows and set them aside for language learning. This way you are more likely to practice regularly. After a while, it will become a habit and sticking to it will require hardly any effort at all. It will also help you to navigate the ocean of content that is Netflix. Now, the thing is that Netflix has so much content, especially in some of the wider spread languages. Now, that is very easy to get lost in and to waste valuable time trying to decide what shows to watch. Now, to avoid this, choose a movie or show in advance, put it in your schedule and stick to it. This will save you precious time, which you can now spend learning and having fun. Tip number two is to watch actively. Now, there is nothing wrong with the so-called passive viewing. That is to just watch a show that you would watch in your native language, maybe grabbing a snack or a cup of tea. Passive viewing is relaxing. It doesn't require too much effort, but it is still good for language practice. However, for more effective learning, active viewing is what you should aim for. Now, this means that you treat watching the show as learning material. You hunt for useful vocabulary and grammar, translate and write down new items, you're focused and you're alert. Now, this type of viewing requires much more effort and is harder to do, especially after a long, stressful day at work. At the same time, though, it ensures better results in terms of your language learning and helps you improve your language skills faster. Not every Netflix language learning session has to be active, but if you combine regular passive viewing with some active sessions, you will make progress. Tip number three is to put it into practice. Now this tip is connected with the previous one. So say you've had an active viewing session and you've written down a few words and phrases. What now? Don't just leave them on a random piece of paper or lost and forgotten in a notebook somewhere. You need to continue to work with them. So here are a few things that you can do. Look up words and phrases in a dictionary, write out their definitions and some good examples. 
You can make flashcards with the new vocabulary and you can use the old fashioned paper way or the space repetition apps like Anki and Quizlet. Put post-its with new expressions around your house or at least around your desk. And don't forget to look at them regularly and occasionally replace the old post-its with fresh ones with new vocabulary. Bring out a list at your next viewing session and see how many of the items that you can find in the next episode. You can even write a short summary of the episode or movie that you watched and use some of this new vocabulary that you've picked up. And lastly, try out a couple of new phrases next time that you chat with someone in your target language, either online or offline. You can probably come up with more ideas that match your language learning style, but the important thing is, is don't stop at writing out new words. Practice using them again and again so that they eventually make their way into your active vocabulary. Tip number four is to pay attention to non-verbal cues. Now paying attention to non-verbal cues is important for at least two reasons. Firstly, non-verbal cues such as facial expressions, gestures and body language can help you to understand what is going on. That's why watching something is a bit easier than just listening because you have lots of visual information to help you with your understanding. Secondly, such visual clues can also carry cultural information. For instance, gestures typical for the country or the preferred comfortable distance between people speaking to each other. And next time you watch a show, pay close attention to how people behave, the way that they move, the gestures and facial expressions, and see if it gives you any cultural clues that you can pick up and use yourself. Tip number five is to turn on audio descriptions. Now, some Netflix show have an option called audio description, and this is available in the subtitles menu. Now, this feature turns on a voiceover that describes everything that's happening on screen, even when characters aren't talking. For instance, if no one is saying anything, but there is a character pacing nervously around a room, you will hear that described in the voiceover. Now, originally this option was developed for visually impaired people, but language learners can benefit from it as well. By turning on the audio description, you get more language out of the movie or show that you're watching, because all the silent bits will now have audio in them. It is also a different type of audio or a different type of description, since movies are mostly dialogue. It will be narration and description, and there will be other types of useful language items in there. This option also allows you to turn a show or movie into an audiobook and listen to it while you were doing something else like arts and crafts or doing chores around the house. So here are a few tips to keep in mind. Now the audio description option is generally available for shows that are marked as Netflix originals. So look out for a big red N in the top corner of the show's graphic. The audio description option is mostly available for the original language of the show. So look out for shows that are originally in your target language in order to find this option. Tip number six is to rewatch fragments of shows and movies. Now, sometimes you even have to watch parts of a show again to understand fully what's going on. But you can also do this intentionally for language learning. Now, some fragments or even whole episodes or movies can contain great language that you will benefit from hearing more than once. You can also do this to ease yourself into watching shows in your target language. Start by watching a scene or two in your native language with or without subtitles. Then you can watch it again in the original with subtitles in your target language or without any subtitles at all. So what are the do's and don'ts of learning languages with Netflix? Now, this has been quite an in-depth video, but don't worry, I'm going to give you a recap of the 22 most juiciest and genius tips that I've shared so far. So the do's are create a separate Netflix profile for language learning, set your profile language to your target language for more practice, try out using Netflix on your smartphone or watching it on your TV, try different ways of searching for content for better results, try using a VPN to check out different content that's available in other countries, use the subtitles to match your language level. Add shows and movies to your my list and use the like and dislike to help the algorithm recommend more of what you enjoy. Check out both shows that are originally in your target language and shows in other languages that are dubbed in your target language. Find time for learning and decide what to watch in advance. Practice regularly. Watch actively, at least on the occasion, with more focus on the language. Continue working with the language material that you have already picked up. Pay attention to non-verbal cues. Check out the audio description option, rewatch fragments of shows or movies for better language retention, and have fun. Find content that you actually like that interests you. After all, language learning should be enjoyable. 
Now let's take a look at a few things not to do. So what should you avoid doing? Well, don't read subtitles instead of listening. Now subtitles are great, but don't abuse this option. But don't ignore subtitles altogether either as they can be very helpful. Don't translate every new word that you come across. And don't just watch passively all the time either. It is good practice, but it can make your learning more effective with just a bit of extra effort. Avoid re-watching one and the same show over and over again. Rewatching it is good in moderation, but watching varied content is good for your language skills. Don't view language learning with Netflix as a chore. It is a great way to learn while also enjoying a good show or movie, which is the opposite of a chore. As you can see, Netflix can be quite a powerful language learning tool. And hopefully after watching this video, you feel more confident and even more convinced that it is going to help you to master your target language sooner. So which language are you currently learning? And do you already use Netflix to learn languages? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're serious about improving your target language, any language, you can download my free guide, nine reasons you're not fluent yet and how to fix it. Just click on the link in the description below and I'll send you my free guide. In the meantime, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on those notifications so you get an alert when I post more videos like this one. In the meantime, thanks for watching and happy language learning with Netflix. Ciao, bye.